Mary has agreed to be our patient today. I'd like to thank you for coming today, Mary. Would it be okay if we demonstrate the physical exam techniques today? Yes, it would. Thank you. Um, as always, our first step in performing the physical exam is to make sure that our patient is comfortable. As you can see, Mary has changed into a gown uh, and she has a drape covering her legs to keep uh, our concerns for modesty at all times. Uh, and then uh, and to get started, I'm going to wash my hands. And I have some hand sanitizer over here. So the first thing that we do in examining the extremities um, is inspection. And so I'm going to start by examining her skin. And of course, to expose the portions of the skin, I'm going to examine. Mary, would I be able to lift yes. this gown up yes. for you? I'm just going to roll this up if I can, just so I can see your entire arm. Mm -hmm. Would it be OK if I do that on this side mm -hmm. as well? Yes. So this way, I have good exposure of her entire upper extremity. Um, up towards the shoulder and I'm going to initially inspect the skin and I'm looking for any scars or skin lesions that may be present on her upper extremity um, and then I'll also look at the hands and nails and if I may I'm just going to lift your hand up here and look for any uh, areas of discoloration I look at the nails um, and make sure that they appear normal noting the contour of the nails or any irregularities or abnormalities. And again, looking at both the palm and the back of the hands. Um, next, we will move towards palpating pulses. And we're going to start by palpating the radial pulses. This sometimes may be done during the vital sign section. But I'll palpate both of her radial pulses in this area simultaneously using my fingers. Pulses are gauged on a four scale. Zero would be absent, one would be a very diminished pulse. Two is normal, three is brisk, and four would be a bounding, very strong pulse. Next I'm going to find the brachial pulse. And again, we may have examined this uh, brachial pulse during our vital signs and checking the, um, the blood pressure but I'll bring my finger up into the crease of the elbow here on the inner aspect. And again, finding that pulse, I feel with both sides. Sometimes your pressure over the pulse needs to be fairly firm to get down to feel the pulsations. And too firm a push may result in um, blocking off the artery, so you don't want to push too hard. Thank you. So that's the inspection and palpation portions. Sometimes I will palpate gently portions of the arm if I feel an area that might have a firmness or something that I would like to palpate. Range of motion is next, and I'd like to start at the fingers. And Mary, what I'd like you to do is I'd just like to have you lift your hands out and just open your fingers all the way, and then turn them around and make a fist. And I'm looking for areas that, that just don't bend as well as others or open as well as others. We're going to do the same thing with the wrist. I'm going to have you bend your wrist all the way back and then all the way forward. And I'd like to do the same thing with the elbows, bending your elbows all the way up and then all the way out. And you can see I'm demonstrating what I want Mary to do, and she just follows along to be able to test these various motions. With the shoulders, I've got a couple different motions I'd like to do with you. One of them is bringing your arms up to the sides all the way up. This is abduction back down. And then flexion would be bringing them all the way forward. You can go all the way up high, yep, and then back down. And then the other thing with the shoulders is we check internal external rotation. So I'd first like to test external rotation. Mary, if you bring your arms up and put them behind your head here, very good. And then internal rotation at the shoulder, if you put your arms behind your back like this. Very good. Next, we're going to check our motor or strength. And um, for when, we, um, when we do motor, the first thing we want to monitor for is involuntary movements um, of the muscles. And so I can observe Mary's bicep, um, brachioradialis, and I can observe for twitches or other involuntary motions that may be occurring. Um, we can also assess the tone 
of the muscle just by feeling that muscle and then moving the, those muscles through its arc and feeling for any firmness or stiffness in tone or possibly rigidity or cogwheeling, uh, which is a jerkiness to those muscles. And um, that's a nice normal tone. Um, next, I would check the strength. And I, I, for this, uh, Mary, I'm going to start up at the shoulder, and we're going to check the deltoid muscle. The deltoid muscle innervated by the axillary nerve, which is C5. And to do this, I'd like to have you hold your arms up. And I'm just going to push down against your resistance. So try to fight me a little here, if you would. And I'm unable to bring those down. So Mary shows normal strength uh, in the deltoid. Next, I'd like to move to the bicep. And Mary, if you bring your arms like this, and now bring them forward towards your chin. And so she is pulling hard, and I'm pulling hard against, and I can feel a nice, strong pull there. The deltoid um, is uh, the musculocutaneous nerve at um, C5, C6. And next, the tricep. If you bring your arms in that same position, and this time, I'd like you to just push me away. Now with this one, sometimes they push with their whole body, so you want to try to just isolate the hands when they're pushing, or their arms. The tricep is uh, innervated by the radial nerve, which is C7, C8. Next, we'll test the muscles of the hands. Um, Mary, I'd like to ask you to open your fingers. This is called finger abduction. And then hold them open for me, if you would. I'll try to squeeze them together to check the interosseous muscles, those are innervated by the ulnar nerve, which is C8, T1. And next, I'm going to check thumb opposition. Um, hold and squeeze your fingers together, if you would, and don't let me pull through. So I try to pull through here, and that tests um, the opponent's pollicis muscle, innervated by the median nerve, which is also C8 and T1. When testing the strength, uh, we use a five-point scale to describe our findings. Um, zero would be no strength or movement at all. One would be just slight bits of movement. Two would be full range of motion against gra uh, with gravity. Um, and three would be uh, the ability to move in a full range of motion against gravity. Um, four would be slightly weak or diminished, and five would be normal as expected. So next we move to the sensory examination. Um, we're going to start the sensory examination by testing light touch. And again, Mary, I'm just going to make sure we adjust these shoulders and the drape, or the gown, excuse me, to make sure I've got exposure of the areas I want to check. And I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. I'm just going to light touch parts of your skin and let me know if it feels the same or different on the two sides. I'm going to check here, which is top of the shoulder. Same. C4. The lateral elbow. Same. That's C5. Here. Same. The thumb would be C6, Same. middle finger, which would be C7, Same. small finger, which would be C8, Same. and the medial elbow, which would